Hey YouTubers, this is Lonnie Clark again, Nuts for Art. I am going to read a little bit from our book, Population Control Through Nuclear Pollution, and then I'm going to finish a science project that I have to work on. I have a something due on Monday, and I have to ask them in this terrestrial science class, this is interesting, I have to ask the scientific question about anything in the terrestrial science world, take a pro and a con attitude. So my question was, does the IAEA disclose the truth in regards to nuclear pollution. <laughs> so I found two sources for and against, and I have to do this thing, but I thought that was interesting. So I'm going to finish that up after I finish this. We are in, I believe this is Jephthah 11. Yes, we are. It's quite a long uh, chapter. It's Chapter 11 is Moral and Social Responsibility of Science and Scientists. And we are on page... 213 I think it goes up to like 228 so we've got a ways to go new we're a uh, new subtitle called radiation standards are based on old data hmm gee wonder why so perhaps the most important aspect of human medicine is now in its groping infancy yet our standards of radiation exposure of these delicate chromosomal structures were set 10 years before this explosion of now, accu now accumulating evidence. And our scientists, with characteristic omnipotent confidence, tells us our radiation standards are, quote, safe, unquote. That careful, conscientious scientists toil to establish these standards, and therefore they must be safe. We do not question the carefulness of the scientists. We do not question that they toil diligently. Nor do we raise a single question concerning their conscientious application of inadequate knowledge then available to the task before them. But we know they were working in a sea of ignorance, no fault of theirs. The knowledge had not yet arrived. And we are truly appalled, not by their diligence, but by the arrogance of the omnipotent self-idolatry which is reflected by their lack of understanding of the potentially massive hazard at which they were unknowingly placing the human species to guarantee, quote, reasonable latitude for expansion of atomic energy programs, unquote. What conceivable good expanded atomic energy programs will do for a world without humans escapes our understanding. Bygones should, of course, be bygones. Past errors should be considered only insofar as they help us to avoid a second round of errors. But this is not what is happening. The errors are simply being compounded and extended. Can we say Fukushima and Hanford? Mindful of this new body of evidence concerning genetic and chromosomal disorders, we wrote in presenting our original evidence in this volume concerning cancer plus leukemia hazard from radiation, the following, quote, And we must add to these estimates the comment that we have only used the hard data in hand based on cancer and leukemia induced by humans in by radiation in humans by radiation we have said nothing about the possible burden of loss of life and misery from genetic disorders for future generations fetal deaths and neonatal deaths unquote and further quote any conclusion we draw concerning the hazard of the current radiation Excuse me. Any conclusion we draw concerning the hazard of the current radiation guidelines can only be amplified and buttressed by consideration of human misery associated with genetic defects, fetal deaths, and neonatal deaths. The case against perpetuation of the existing FRC guidelines is overwhelmingly strong just on the basis of the cancer leukemia risk. Do you get that? The case against perpetuation of the existing FRC guidelines is overwhelmingly strong just on the basis of cancer leukemia risk. 
without even considering the potentially much larger, and that's in italics, much larger, problem of effects upon future generations, unquote. We did indeed appreciate the much larger problem of genetic disorders and possible chromosomal disorders, but because we knew that because we then knew our ignorance prevented even an estimate of size of effect, we refrained in the face of ignorance from saying anything about the size of this calamitous possibility. And we were alone in our concern about the unknowns in the picture of hazards to humans from radiation in 1969, almost a decade after the safe standards were set. Let us look at the words of one of America's most respected students of such matters, Professor Brian McMahon of Harvard University, writing in 1969, quote, While a great more while a great deal more is known now than was known 20 years ago, it must be admitted that we still do not have the mo that we still do not have most of the data that would be required for an informed judgment on the maximum limits of exposure advisable for individuals or populations. Unquote. The reader will realize from what has been stated in the foregoing that Professor McMahon is, of course, completely correct. He realizes very well that new discoveries in genetics, in human chromosomal cytogenetics, are in their infancy. How can we possibly know what radiation dosage is advisable or acceptable if we don't know the magnitudes of effects other than to realize that there can be many, many times as large as the shocking cancer leukemia risks? Dr. Tompkins worries about costs. That's the new subtitle. And how does the moral and social responsibility of some of the standard-setting scientists manifest itself in response to our warnings of the serious defects in our standards? Warnings of, put, warnings of the potentially dangerous effects of allowing atomic energy to proceed with such allowable radiation dosages to our people. Dr. Pauling Tompkins is presently the executive director of the Federal Radiation Council. How did he respond to the Goffman Tamplin suggestion that a massive reduction in the amount of radiation the government allows for, the Amer for Americans? Let me read that again. So did you get that? Tamplin and Goffman suggested a massive reduction in the amount of radiation. How did he respond to the Goffman Tamplin suggestion of a massive reduction in the amount of radiation the government allows for Americans? Let us quote Dr. Tompkins. Quote, if the Goffman Tamplin recommendations might well price out society, well might price society out of business. Oh wow. It in quotes the Tamplin Goffman recommendations, unquote might well price society out of business. To reduce radiation exposure tenfold would cost billions. It might cost even more than the Vietnam War. To comply, you'd practically rebuild all nuclear installations and the factories that might use any sort of X-ray equipment. We have to, we'd have to review radiation exposure from wristwatches, TV sets, and radium dials. And I'm not completely sure it is now technically possible to monitor down to such a tight level." Unquote. Wow, what a bastard. Back to his book. We have here the characteristic response, the economics of safety, the cost in dollars in preventing human suffering. Would it be a miss for citizens to ask their, quote, protectors, unquote, to be more concerned about health and safety and less about dollars and economics? The confusion and disarray in AEC scientific circles is, however, far more ridiculous than the above. Apparently, not knowing or remembering what Dr. Tompkins had, had said about costing billions to reduce radiation exposure tenfold. Dr. Victor Bond, he is an associate director at Brookhaven National Laboratory, 
and Dr. Theos Thompson, two staunch AEC scientists, not too long after hastened to assure us, hastened to assure us that no AEC programs either are going to or are contemplating even a small fraction of the allowable radiation exposure, even out to the two, even out to the year 2000. Huh. That's interesting. That was in like 1968. If we listen to Dr. Bond and Dr. Thompson, the cost of reducing standards tenfold would not be one penny since AEC programs, according to them, have no possibility of giving anywhere near this exposure to people. How strange indeed is Dr. Tompkins' statement that reducing standards would cost billions. Which of these confusing standards shall the public believe? Not one penny or billions of dollars. <laughs> That's quite a range, it seems to us. But such, confuse, but such confusion among AEC and FRC officials is only the beginning. They are contradicting each other concerning delivering one one-tenth of the current allowable radiation dosage, while along comes an AEC official who is quoted as saying he doesn't know how soon the full current allowable limit will be reached by the U.S. population. And as it is, quote, depends upon plowshare programs, among other things, unquote. I'm going to read the next subtitle. Confusion in the AEC. Surely someone at the Atomic Energy Commission or the Federal Radiation Council must have some idea of what the radiation exposures are or expected to be from current practices. Better than statements which imply, A, we never, e we never even by the year 2000 approach more than a small percent of the current standards. B, it will cost billions to reduce the current standards to one-tenth of their current value. And C, we can't say when everyone will reach the dosage allowed by the current standards. Might the public ask for a little more credibility from the AEC scientists and spokesmen? What impression might the public get from such confused, contradictory statements concerning social responsibility of AEC spokesmen and scientists? The Atomic Energy Commission scientists and supporters wasted little time before leaping to the defense of current radiation standards. Those self-same standards that have no scientific foundation, whatever, and were decided 10 years ago, before much or most of the relevant evidence was in. Quote, and that evidence, in many respects, was just the beginning, was just beginning to come in as far as the chromosomal and genetic effects, unquote. Maybe I should read that again. The Atomic Energy Commission scientists and supporters wasted little time before leaping to the defense of current radiation standards. Those self-same standards that have no scientific foundation whatever and were decided 10 years ago, before much or most of the relevant evidence was in. Quote, and that evidence, in many respects, was just beginning to come in as far as the chromosomal and genetic effects. Unquote. Let us look at the permissive pernicious effects of the arrogant self-adulation of scientists, well-intentioned as it may be. Congressman Holyfield is currently chairman of the Joint Committee on Atomic Energy, supposedly a watchdog committee, but now under the aegis of Holyfield and Congressman Hosmer, even more promotional than that of the AEC itself. A group of scientists apparently worried that Congressman Holyfield might be suffering from sleepless nights over his concern that lowered radiation standards could interfere with his favorite AEC promotional schemes, decided to write Mr. Holyfield a delightfully soothing and reassuring letter of sympathy and condolence. Quote, Several reports have appeared suggesting that the authorities responsible for the guidelines for the safe uses of ionizing radiation have been grossly complacent and even in error in setting their current radiation standards. 
Unfortunately, adequate rebuttal requires a somewhat lengthy and technical reply unsuitable for publication in the press. Such material is as as is necessary is contained in the publications of the Federal Radiation Council and the National Council on Radiation Protection and Measurement and the International Commission on Radiological Protection. These reports show evidence of the great competence of these bodies and their concern for the public health." Unquote. What do the 29 signers of this condolence letter really tell us? First, lest there be any misunderstanding, it would be a grave mistake to impugn the motives of the people who signed the letter or to impute evil intentions to them. They can, however, be regarded as outstanding examples of the dynamic of science and scientists' ideal, ideal, idealization and self-idealization. I'm sorry, that's the word. They can, however, be regarded as outstanding examples of the dynamic of science and scientists' idolization and self-idolization. The maxim of this dynamic is that scientists must, intrin must be intrinsically good and that scientists, no matter what their actions, must somehow be acting in the best interest of the public. If this had indeed been the case over the past half century, we would now be facing no crucial environmental crisis of deepening proportions. But we are, and science technology will find no place to hide from its responsibility in helping to generate the crisis, no matter what pious phrases its apologists make. Again, no evil intent, but an, a, a, an abhorrent result of a relentless dynamic. We suggest that the Sagan letter as above as follows, quote, oh, wait a minute, let me try this again. We may translate the Sagan letter above as follows, quote, the people who populated the various commissions and groups who promulgated the various standards, now under total challenge, were sincere, hardworking, dedicated scholars who did the best they could, unquote. So we're now at a new subtitle, and it's called Some Questions for the Signers of the Sagan Letter. I think I will stop there. Wow. This is a shocking book. It's unbelievable. It's really just about money. That's sad. Put your courage feet on, you guys. Thanks for uh, listening, and I probably won't be able to get to this for another couple of days. Uh, Saturday, tonight's Thursday night or Friday night and so probably I won't do this till Sunday night I don't think anyways uh, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there and um, I hope all of you will contact your mother my mother's dead so I guess I talk to her every day or she talks to me anyways <laughs> I'll talk to you guys later ciao put your courage feet on and you know let's just keep on keeping on <laughs>